right, folks, this is how easy it is to save a gear. You loosen this up and you pull it out. And you stick your finger in there. And if you got gear oil, you're good to go. If you don't, put some in it. You don't even need a funnel. Pour it right in there. So what it comes down to is, is uh, $28 for a gallon of uh, gear oil. And it only held a little over a quart. And then, uh, or well, closer to two quarts, I guess. But they do it by weight. But that was $28. So you figured I used half that 14 bucks. Uh, the gear was with shipping was $830 to give anybody an idea that, uh, you know, no old stock, which I think is a, actually is a fair price, actually a real fair price. Uh, because where are you going to find a 48 pound bronze gear shaped the right way that's been saved for 70 years? So no complaints here. So now we're going to start taking the, uh, the temporary stuff off of it. And when I say temporary, I mean temporary fuel tank. Uh, chain to hold it in gear because of the detent is uh, stuck uh, Starting system, you know anything that is uh, Temporary like the change for the cab lock. We're gonna fix the cab lock and Get this other boom rebuilt So we're gonna Slowly be working on that and I guess I'll film it. I hadn't been doing any filming at all on anything. I've really been doing so I've been working every day. I just hadn't been filming anything fuel tanks there now it looked really clean but I think we're still gonna pull it and check it just pull this cover get all these bolts out and then uh, we'll pull the tank out of there and look it over really well make sure there's no holes in it it looked clean inside but that don't mean a thing uh, there's no fuel in it for some reason uh, let me see we got a uh, one definitely one brake band war this one's got some play in the in it here we're probably going to live with that for a while and uh, it's not really hurting anything and I'm not really even using that winch that's going to be the drag winch I had mentioned about taking the tag line off and I can use the drag winch you know to, to use as a tag line because I don't plan on using it as a you know anything for the bucket so we get these doors freed up and probably remake them doors and they're bent up and dented up and rusted up and, uh, that way we can I want them to open and close like they're supposed to even if I don't paint this thing, I may, but I don't know. Uh, if I do, we're going to take it off. Probably take these off. I'm assuming them are, they may be rivets, but I'm assuming they're probably carriage head. I don't know. But we'll cut them off if we have to and get this grill off and hammer it out. Looks like it's been hit with an axe. And I just don't know how you beat a machine like this thing has been beat. It's just, it's a shame. And then, uh, We'll take, uh, unfortunately, this tag is gone. This was a tag that just said unit, crane and shovel company. Uh, I hate, you know, I liked it. I hate it's gone, but it's gone. And then uh, we'll cut out and replace that section there. We're probably not going to uh, do a lot. Maybe just scrape the paint off of it, but that's about it. We're not going to do no major body work or anything like that. You know, there's been some dents and stuff in it too. I think this thing, looking at a distance yesterday, I could see that it looked like it said Carthage on it. And Carthage is a town next to us here that this may have been one of their town units. The guy that uh, originally had this before the guy I got it from had done a lot of uh, buying from municipalities, auctions and stuff. So, uh, he bought quite a few pieces of equipment from Vast down here and backhoe and stuff. So he may have bought this from the county. And let me see, what else was we gonna, there's our chains we're gonna get off of it. Uh, we'll take the clutches apart here and clean everything, get everything right. Uh, one more thing I wanted to explain. I wasn't sure why this piece was on here. And this is an angle iron piece that somebody had made and put on. And I couldn't quite figure out why. It's built heavy, it's welded in really well. Uh, on one of the crane groups on Facebook, I seen one of these units that had a squared off cab and I couldn't figure out why it was squared off it wasn't rounded like all the other ones and somebody had mentioned that it probably got crushed from the boom I guess they had a big issue with the and I'm not just on units but with all the cranes the boom come up too straight and like if you was to drop a load quick or something the boom could flip back and come back and crush the cab you know this side of the cab so that may be why this is here I'm sure it is and it would come up and hit this before it would ever 
hit the uh, the cab itself. Now I don't think that's factory. I think that's something somebody added on, but it seems to be a uh, done nicely. Let's put it that way. So we'll raise the boom up sometime and check that out. Okay, folks. I think the first thing we're going to try to mess with is this swing lock, and this is not my style. This is a uh, my VIN or my serial number. VIN number. Serial number is higher. So this is what I've got. Looks like there's two bolts there and maybe two there, three there. Hmm. What I want to try to do is take this rod off, get this pin out, which is going to be tough, and then actually unbolt this and drop this through the bottom of the machine. And we'll take it out and see if we can uh, get everything freed up. <clears throat> when, uh, when you twist this, it brings these teeth out, and these teeth uh, dog into your slowing gear, uh, which is your turntable gear. And when it does that, that's what stops it. And then it pulls back to release it. So uh, that's why the handle is bent like that, is because it twists. So we're going to try it, see if we can get it out. So here we are hammer, PB blaster. There's a can. That's a neat looking can. Went out of town too, so I don't think it's that new. Alright. All I see on this machine, and all I've seen before, was two bolts here, and then our pin running through, and a lot of wear. So I think it's time to do some, maybe do some torching. Yeah, because I don't know how from the heck. <laughs> this is going to be fun. All right, we're going to torch this thing out of here one way or the other, and then we'll go from there. Okay, folks, I uh, swung the machine around here so I can get to that lock. And hopefully we'll be able to go up under this machine. You can see the lock there. Yeah, I don't see it coming off. Let me get some light, but i got a feeling that. Well, this thing's permanent. Yeah, I think it's like about everything else on this machine. It looks like maybe somebody had a some issues with it. And I'm almost thinking that maybe it got welded. Because this plate don't look factory. <laughs> yeah, it's all welded in. Okay. So. I think we're taking no taking it out. Yeah, unless we just, we may cut around the floor a little bit. That sure is a shame, but it's definitely welded in all the way. We're not going to have a choice but to get it freed up. I think the only way we're going to be able to do it is to cut a hole around it in the floor up top and go from there. It's uh, Somebody has welded this entire piece on, and I didn't notice that over there to at the swamp, but that's what they've done. So like everything else, it's been boogered. And we will just see what we can do. Uh, as you can see, hopefully this part right here, this plate, moves in and out. And when it moves in and out, the teeth dog get into these teeth. And it does that with this, and it's on a cam. So until we get this to turn in the center, it's not going to cam in. So. Uh, we'll just keep playing with it here. That's loose. So we're definitely not stuck down here. We're just stuck up top. All right, let's go see what we can do. We heated this over at the swamp with the torch. And you can probably see right in there. And you can see the brake line around it where that piece is at. But, uh, you know, we don't have a choice but just to... I guess just keep wiggling it back and forth, heating it up, and I'm going to actually cut into the floor a little bit around it, and maybe that'll free it up a little bit. I don't know if that's part of the problem, but I'm going to have to get a shovel in here and get some of this stuff cleaned out. It's, uh, you can't bl really blow that out with an air hose. You need to shovel it out first, but we're going to be doing quite a bit of pressure washing, try to get this cab cleaned up inside, and, you know, we're not going to be able to dry this thing in permanent, but we're going to put some glass in it to try to get it keep the water off the, the uh, controls and stuff so we can 
at least try to keep stuff freed up. There you go. All right, bring it back again. Hell, it come a long ways that time. Yeah, I think it's going past that, Charlie. That's it, that's as far as it's going to go that way. Yeah, it's getting farther and farther every time. Okay, you're... Moving easier too. Yeah. You're higher. You got another piece of pipe. Yeah, over there. You want one longer than that? We're on top of that thinner. Thinner. I'm going to just slide over top of that. Yeah, we can find something. See how far she's moving. Go ahead, Charlie. Whichever way you need to go. Okay, that's going back to the opposite way. Okay. Yeah, that's going back to the opposite way. It's starting to move it. Yep. Finally. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah, the plate's starting to go in now. Okay, folks, here's what we've done. I had all that rust down here anyway, so I just went ahead and cut this panel out. And we'll square it off and come on down and bend a piece. I'm assuming it's bolted in. Yeah, it's bolted in. So we'll cut them bolts off and we'll, uh, we'll bend a new piece and put it in here and weld it. We might go up a little bit. There'll be a few more holes. Anyway, so we'll square that off and fix it. Shouldn't be a problem. Charlie was here, gave me a hand. Uh, we fought with this thing for quite a while, but we finally got it. Boy, she was stuck hard. So, what I ended up doing was burning a hole beside it. Uh, so, right there, you can see, I, I just took and burn a hole to be able to get, relieve, you know, some of the pressure around it when we heated it, and it actually helped it out. And then, uh, between that, and then I made this tool here, we broke the handle. Here's the handle. And it was war anyway, so it don't matter. I mean, we can fix that. So... Once we did that, I got everything out of it. There's a pen that goes through it, a small pen, and then I made this piece. And we was able to put a bar on it and go through this hole, this opening that we made, and turn it back and forth. So we just kept doing that and doing that for a while until we finally got it to move pretty good. Then I made this piece, and I put it on a impact. And the impact moving it back and forth, back and forth, really freed it up really well. So now we're, we're good to go. It's uh, free like it needs to be. And uh, you can actually turn it and lock it in. So there it's locked. So that's basically done, except for redoing the bottom of the handle and then making it where it's got a, a pin that slides through uh, a hole right there I guess you can see it so anyway we'll tighten it up good and tight so we don't have so much wear in it and uh, get it back together so it is locking in all the way check the plate underneath uh, matter of fact I think I've got it locked in so we'll climb under there and take a look at it all right there it is folks locked all the way in like it's supposed to be that's good. That is good. I'm glad to see that. I'll be glad to be able to drive it with it locked this time. And uh, no more uh, chaining it. All right. All right, folks. So we'll get it started on putting things back together tomorrow. And uh, it took a lot longer to do. Get this thing freed up than I wanted to spend on it. But uh, it had to be done. Be back on it tomorrow. Appreciate everybody watching. Until next time. Bye.